Stephen Curry should be shooting this much every single night from three point range, every night for the rest of his career. At some point, you think that this crazy run that he is on might slow down. Well, that certainly has not happened yet. Um, After last night with another unbelievable performance against the Philadelphia 76ers, in April, 10 games, he has averaged 40.8 points per game, 7.2 three-pointers per game, while shooting 55% from the field, 50% from three, 91% from the free throw line, and is on pace to join James Harden, Elgin Baylor, Kobe Bryant, who did it three times, and Wilt Chamberlain, who did it 11 times, as the only players in NBA history to average 40 players, uh, 40 points, I'm sorry, in a month. Holy mackerel. <laughs> We're just watching history. just keeps going, Chris. We're literally just keeps watching on going. history. Yeah. I mean, it just keeps on going. I mean, we talked about this on Friday's show. It just keeps on going. <laughs> <laughs> and he is shooting he, he, and he is shooting more threes. I mean, you had said, what if he shot more threes? I mean, he is shooting more threes. I saw a uh, countdown there or a uh, historical perspective the other day from uh, Tommy Beer, who put this up on Twitter, that he now has, and I guess last night he made 10 threes, didn't he? Yeah. So if, okay, so if he made 10 last night, that I think that's four times in a week that he has done it. And you have guys, These are this is a list of players that have ever made uh, 10 or more threes in a game and uh, that have done it either one time or zero times. Ray Allen, Kevin Durant, Kobe Bryant, Kyrie Irving, Larry Bird, Peja Stojakovic, Reggie Miller. He has made more three-pointers than uh, going into last night than any team outside of the Mavericks. In the last week, <laughs> team, team. I mean, this is just crazy. And one of the craziest numbers, in fact, it might be uh, the absolute craziest number of all of them that I saw about what is uh, about what has gone on with him is that if Steph Curry missed each of his next five hundred. Three point attempts. So he went 0 for 500 over the next two seasons, and then he retired. He'd still have a higher career three point average than Ray Allen. What? <laughs> 0 for 500? <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> I mean, what we are watching, we are in the midst of, you know, to steal your line on LeBron James, do not take. Uh, Steph Curry for granted because Thank you, Chris. <laughs> what is happening right now? And you know, look, everybody watches the tapes. Somebody on the other team is doing a scout for the next game. I mean, what's the game plan? Like, slow this guy down. How about we don't let this guy hit 10 threes? And so you know that for the last week, if you're scouting that game, <laughs> if you're on the staff, that's theoretically what you're attempting to do when a guy's going bananas like this, and yet it continues. There's nothing you can do. No. Nothing. Maybe so. uh, uh, do you have your thoughts changed on the amount of three pointers that he should take every night? Because originally, when I said like 15 plus every single night to you, you're like, eh, it's a bit much. Do you I feel just think, a yeah, no, I, not a bit much. I just think he's already taking well, a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I mean? was already leading the NBA in three point attempts per game. Yeah. But like now that we're actually seeing him do it, granted oh, he he's, can, I mean, like, grant, granted he's not going to shoot fifty five percent from three, you know, for the whole season. But it's not like it's <laughs> that far off from his career average. <laughs> no, really, <laughs> you know. So it's like he's shooting forty two percent, forty three percent in his career. 43% in his entire career for the entire month of April, his number from three point land is at 50%. Um, so with him, it's a type of thing where he's above his career average, but even if he were to fall to his career average, he'd still be putting up obscene numbers. It's just yeah. the amount of the amount of attempts is what's, is what's really changed for him. Well, and now I know we talked about this regarding on, on the team side, a couple of weeks ago when 
Uh, I was chronicling with the, with the Utah Jazz, and you had written that article about how one of the reasons the Jazz have improved such a great deal this year was because last year their percentage was great from three, but they were in the middle of the pack in attempts. And now the attempts have gotten much more in line with the the top teams, right? Um, you, you And you would think, much like the Steph thing, that number would go down, and possibly significantly, that mm. if you ended up taking a lot more of them, that number went down. Well, in fact, that was not true at all. With the Jazz, their attempts have gone up significantly, and they have not seen a dip at all in their percentage uh, from three-point range. And the same is true with Steph Curry, right? Like, do you hold the same number if you end up taking a lot more? Well, for the Jazz, it's worked out team-wise. And on the Steph front, he's taking more, he, but he's making more. Yeah. When he's taking, you know what I mean? Like, usually that's not the way this goes. The attempts get higher, the percentage comes down. Um, just like when you see... You know, there'll be somebody in like a three point percentage that's very high up there and you'll see they take like four a game. But if they took 10 a game, they wouldn't be, they, they, they would, they take their numbers would drop. Yeah. They they take collapse. Yeah. They're, they're wide open. Mm -hmm. Maybe in the four that they take, right? They, they get a corner three, uh, some of these power forwards or whoever it may be, but that's not necessarily, uh, who you're you know, making sure you have to stay connected to the entire time. They get four wide open threes a game. This guy, I mean, he gets no open and wide open threes. None. He had the one last night where you had the crossover. Yeah, Draymond, yeah, yeah. Draymond threw his arms up in the air right. before the shot even like kind of left his hands. Hilarious. <laughs> well, like that's the thing though, Chris. So Steph over his last five games is averaging 16.6 three-pointers per game. What reason is there for that number to go down? That's that's my question now. Like what even if he has a stretch where he's shooting only 38% from 3. Like let's just say that happens. 16 attempts per game, 38% from 3. 38% from 3 is bad for Stephen Curry. Yeah. <laughs> but it's still good in the in in the grand scheme of the game of basketball. So what reason is there for him to start shooting only 12 per game? Right. A guy of his caliber whose efficiency doesn't drop with more opportunities I see no reason for him to ever shoot average less than 15 three-point attempts per game. Well, That's just my opinion. One of the things that you talked about, and I think he has been resistant to being the, you know, the James Harden where it's just one guy and then the other four guys, you know, do whatever. Um, you talked about how, you know, this Warriors team was kind of at a crossroads uh, two weeks ago. And it's like, the answer is... Steph, more of this guy, yep. more of the ball in his hands, more of him. Yeah. Okay, fine. You don't want to be the James Harden and dribble the ball into the ground while four guys, you know, spread the court and you, and then you go to the free throw line, but that doesn't mean there can't be more of you and you are not just an innocent bystander who yes, takes the most shots, but that you're kind of off the ball and, uh, you know, just running the offense and one of the guys. It's you and the other four dudes. That's the way it is, you know? And, and, and even then, like, it's not like some of these threes aren't coming within the flow of the offense. You know, right. other guys are getting touches too. I also think that they have, uh, this is not a, this is not the nicest thing to say. And I love the kid, but I do think they're better, better off without Wiseman. I do. I think just, you know, it's, mm. it, if you're winning that again, they're just the win now. I'm not saying for the development of the future, and that may end up being what's best, but you don't have to serve two masters right now, right? Where it's like, okay, let a kid take his lumps, develop him uh, over time, and the minutes on the court are going to reap their benefits greatly, hopefully sooner than later. Like, you don't have to do that anymore. And who he is replaced with, with the guys that are more capable to help you win tonight, right? Each and every night. Did you see the Kerr quote um, from last week when he no. said, we just didn't have a sense of how raw he would be because we only had three college games of his. Can we get James up to speed to match the timeline for our three core guys? That's a great question. And we don't know the answer. And he said that on 95, seven, the game in the Bay area. Um, 
I thought it was very, very interesting that he would admit publicly that mm. they didn't know how raw James Wiseman was. And then, no, that he was not, telling everybody before the season, we nailed it. This well, kid's going to be a star the whole time. Well, the thing is, I mean, that was the whole conversation for Warriors fans all season long is why are they not running more pick and roll with Steph and James yeah. Wiseman? That's Wiseman's skill set. And I'm, I don't, I mean, no knock on Kerr here. It's just that's what made it a little bit surprising. Very mm. surprising why they didn't do more of that throughout the season because that was Wiseman's strengths. His weaknesses are quick decision making are passing. And that's sort of the appeal with Golden State is that like he's put into a situation where he's less comfortable. Maybe it leads to growth. But what he's best at today is rim running, you know, rolling to the rim, finishing lobs, you know, finishing layups and whatnot after one or two dribbles. It just didn't get a ton of opportunities to do that. And, you know, that's no knock on him either. He can still be a successful NBA player. It's just what the game needed. He wasn't able to give it. And like you said, Chris, the Warriors right now are better without having to worry about how to fit him in by playing Draymond Green more often at the five or playing Looney and Draymond in the front court. Those guys just work better within the flow of the type of offense that they run or want to run. And the fact that they're running even more pick and roll with Draymond screening yeah. for Steph, the classic 5-1 pick and roll we've seen for years from Golden State. It's just so freaking lethal, yeah, man. You it's wonder, unreal. And you, and you wonder, because I, I, at least I do, on the whole Wiseman front, where they are at. The, what's the inside scuttlebutt? Because I found it very, very strange yesterday that two different times uh, – Bill Simmons on his pod with Rosillo. One time he brought up, like, if you could pair up Wiseman with like the fourth pick overall, if you got that, and get somebody that can, you know, you know, maybe you get like a Brad Beal or you know, like, you know, you get one of these like high level top 10, top 20 guys in the league. You know, if you could pair those things up to somebody who wants something for the future. And I was like, well, geez Louise, like, why would you, are you getting rid of Wiseman already? Or, and then he, uh, and then he brought up, and I'm going to caveat this because Bill said, I'm just throwing it out there. You know, I don't want it aggregated. But he brought up <laughs> James Wiseman for Jaron Jackson Jr. And he was just throwing it out there. And I was just throwing myself off of a bridge. <laughs> like, what What? What are we talking about here? Um, and Jaron Jackson Jr., by the way, should be back uh, within the next game or two. Um but yeah, like the whole, like, why are we talking about them moving off of Wiseman already? And I do think that they have been, I think it has been to their benefit over the course of the last couple of weeks. And that is not necessarily as big of a knock on James as it is you, when you spend the number two pick on a guy, you're getting a minutes for better or for worse. And many times it can be for worse, especially if you've got a raw prospect, um, because you want to get those, you want to get that experience level up. Um, but the other guys are better to help you win that game that yeah. night. And so I think they have reaped the benefits of that. Meanwhile, they've got a guy that's like downright legendary in this last week and a half, two the, weeks. These last it, 10 games. I mean, this is seriously all time stuff. It's like Wilt. <laughs> <It's> Wilt <laughs> scored 40, yes. 50 with ease. And, yes. and, and, and that's the thing, man. Steph is an all-time player. It's like I said to you, I don't know if it was Friday or what, but we look back at Steve Nash, and it's like, oh, he should have shot more threes. He's a mm -hmm. knockdown shooter. He should have just shot more, period, You know, whether it's from mid-range or three or whatever. There's a chance, unless it's starting now, this might be the beginning, is Stephen Curry should be shooting this much every single night mm -hmm. from three-point range, every night. For the rest of his career, maybe there's some stretches where you tone it back because you don't want to increase the wear and tear on him. I get that if that's a factor, but when it's win time, you got to do this when it's yeah. win time. And now's that time. It's the playoff push for the Warriors trying to get into the play in tournament or even push for higher. Look, dude, this is what you need. This is what the team needs to win. It's not selfish. Mm -hmm. It's not selfish. This is what the team needs to thrive at the highest possible levels for Stephen Curry to be the all time player that he is and, and to ride him even on nights where he's shooting only 35% from three. Take it because that's what you need from Steph. Mm -hmm.